Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to talk about integers. I'm going to pretty well go through it very quickly, explain what an integer is, and then to add and subtract some integers together, and um, then we'll end with a big challenge at the end. Okay, so let's quickly go, first of all, and explain, we're going to explain integers really by looking at a number line, starting with a number line. And notice that the number line has the number zero in it. Well, if we add in certain numbers, let's just go to the right, and we're going to go an equal distance from each other, and I'm going to make some ticks there which indicate that distance, and the distance from zero to this first tick will be one unit. Zero to the second tick will be two units, three units, four, five, and so on. So that shows a distance on, from zero on the right side, and we indicate it by indicating these numbers here. Now, these numbers, notice I haven't got anything in between, it's just the numbers themselves, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. And those numbers, if we're going to list them like this, and I don't need to put any more, and so on, are the three dots, the call ellipses, and notice I'm putting them in a proper set notation to show that this is the set of what's called natural numbers. And natural numbers, I often say, are sort of the, the first numbers that you learn when you're a child and you're learning to count, because you usually count with one, two, three, and four, five, six, and you go all the way up as far as you care. All right? Those are called natural numbers. Notice they do not contain any fractional parts. They don't have decimals. There is no zero in there as well. All right, and this is important because people used to think that numbers just were like that, one, two, three, and so on. And, and then, people said, well, you've got this zero. And this zero, they didn't include as a number for many, many years because zero was nothing. And do you include that as a number? Because a number has to represent something. This are two things, so it is a number. And what is the purpose of a number? Well, eventually people realized that zero would have to be included as a number, and they actually included it. In fact, zero is kind of cool, and there's books all on zero and the history of zero. If in one civilization, they even said you're not allowed to say zero because they thought zero meant death. And so you were, it was illegal to say zero. But zero is very important and it is a number. So that's when they actually came up with a different number set. And that number set is the whole number set. And the whole number set consists of zero plus all the natural numbers. So we can put, um, I can put a three, I don't have to because you only need three numbers to show a pattern. But there's the pattern, and this would be called the whole number set, okay, the whole numbers. So what we have now is that we want to talk about integers. Well, what is an integer? Well, an integer, I'm going to just tell you what it is first of all and see if we can actually show it on the number line. Integer are all the natural numbers and their opposites, and zero. Now, what are the opposites of the natural numbers? Well, if you're going to go to the right in this direction, which shows the, the natural numbers, and you keep going on forever, that's why the arrow there. If you're going to go to the left, you can actually show the same distance from the left, so if we go here, and notice we still have that distance from zero, but in this case, you're going to the left. And when you're going to the left, because we have a distance of one from here to here, but to show it in the opposite direction, you have a negative. A distance of two, zero to two, in the opposite direction, you have a negative. And that's how we show the opposites. Okay, so you've got the natural numbers, they're opposites, because it's in the opposite direction, and you also have zero. These are, all of these put together include the integer number set, the integers. And you can write that properly by showing dot, 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 because it goes forever this way, because you can go whatever distance, an infinite distance away from zero. 
So it goes on forever, dot, dot, dot. And let's put negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. And then you have a 0. And then you have to show what happens on this side. Well, you go 1, 2, 3. And then you go and so on. So we can even put a little comma there if you want. And off you go. Okay, so those are the integers, the natural numbers, their opposites, and zero. Notice how I'm calling them the opposites. And because oftentimes people will think that it just consists of these, which are the negative numbers. So these are the negative numbers, the positives, and zero. But only the counting numbers. Integers do not include fractions, okay, or don't include decimals. It's just these types of numbers, the counting ones. All right, that's the integers. Now, what in your, your sheet, you've actually got all these questions about what makes an integer. So remember to put the opposites. The opposites are the negatives of the positives, all right? Now, which number is greater? Um, I just want to make a point, too, that we don't really call these positives when they're natural numbers. Even though they are positive, we just say they're natural numbers. And it's not until we introduce integers that we need to say positives and negatives. All right, because we differentiate them. So which number is greater? Hmm, you're know, gonna have a couple questions like this. And, and I actually included these questions in your sheet, and the reason is, is because oftentimes students get a little mixed up with some numbers. So I'm gonna start with a quick and easy one, and then we're gonna to go to some more difficult, okay? So I'm gonna grab my, my eraser. Let's start with 12 or six, which is greater? Hope you can see it's the 12 because there's more if you've got 12. Well, what if you now have negative 12 and 6? Which one would be greater now? Now, in this case, what we always say is that the greater number is further to the right, by the smaller number is further to the left on the number line. This is why I've put the number line up here, so you can actually see it and think about it. The greater number, well, positive 6 is considered greater, so this would be the answer in this case. Okay? And negative 12 is down there somewhere. So let's try another couple. So that's the greater number. Let's do another one. Erase this. And what if you had um, negative... 14 or negative 12, which is greater. Now, if it was positive, it would look like the, four, the wall of 14 would be greater. But these are both negative. Again, think about um, whether it, it has to be the number further to the right on the number line. So the number further to the left, if you want to go that way, first of all, if you're going to go from 0 to negative 14, that's further to the left than the negative 12. So that's further to the left, and that's a smaller number. And this would be the greater number because it's further to the right, okay? So that's your greater number, all right? So think about the placement on the number line. And don't get mixed up when you go in this direction and you, in the negative side versus the positive side, because it actually flips. It's kind of cool, all right? So that's that with the integers. Now let's look at what's happening here with um, addition and subtraction. Now one of the first things you, you will learn when you're with the spirit of math is that we do do the number line and we go back and forth in the number line, but then we very quickly switch students over to thinking about, okay, you've got 12 positives, and six negatives to think about it this way. And if you've got 12 positives and six negatives, do you have more positives or more negatives? Well, there's clearly more positives, so your answer is going to be positive. How many more positive? Six more, all right? So you're basically a basic subtraction. Most of you know how to do that. We just want you to think about how many more, sometimes adding on from six to 12 is easier than trying to subtract out. So try and think of it that way right now. So if you've got 14 positives and 30 negatives, you've got more negatives than positives, so the answer is going to be negative. 
Now, how many more negatives than positives? Well, 14 to 30, so don't even look at the sign anymore. Just think you're going from 14 to 30, and what you'll, you're thinking about is, well, that's another 16 that you'll need. So you've got 16 as your answer, negative 16. And the reason for this, too, is you can think about it this way, is that if you've got 30 negatives, if I was to write out a whole bunch of negatives, like that, 30 of them, and 14 positives, and let's just pretend that this is 14, what you'll find out is what is left over are a whole bunch of extra negatives. That's why it's negative, and what will be left is whatever it takes to get that extra amount, all right? So that's why this works. So again, I'm going to say this one more time. You've got 30 negatives, 14 positives. There's more negatives, so it's negative. And, and how many more negatives? 16 more, okay? So now let's go to number three. And in number three, got the same idea, except that the negative is in the front, as opposed to the first number, as opposed to the second number. So you've got 17 negatives, 20 positives. That there's more positives than negatives. How many more? Three more. 17 to 20 is three. So it's, and it's the same as 20 minus 17, right? Okay? And then again here, you've got 30 negatives, uh, 23 positives, there's more negatives than positives, so it's negative. How many more negatives than positives? There's seven more. 23 to 30 is seven, so the answer is negative seven. All right, let's get to the number four. Number four, oh, okay, they're both negative. You've got 10 negatives, another 43 negatives. So you know it's going to be negative, and you've got 10 negatives, another 43 negatives makes a total of 53 negatives. And notice that's very similar to just this, which is 10 plus 43 is 53, but because both these are both positives, so the answer is going to be positive. And here they're both negative, so the answer is going to be negative. So don't complicate this, make it simple. 10 negatives, another 43 negatives, 53 negatives. All right, the last one, 0 minus 13. Huh, okay. So you've got 13 negatives and nothing else. So you can even think of it that way. So it is like negative 13. Um, or think about it on the number line if you want. 0 minus 13 is negative 13. That's all it is, okay? Um, finally, your challenge here is to put a couple of these together. So let's, let's start with the first two. 12 positives, 13 negatives. That's, there's more negatives than positives, one more negative. So, so far we're at negative one. Negative one minus 26. Well, there's a total of 27 negatives and that would be your answer. Okay, have fun with this. And um, it's a good chance for you to practice using integers to understand properly now what this is. And, um, and if you have any questions, reach out and ask a teacher and, um, and just get some clarity. Don't just memorize because the teacher has told you to memorize. Understand what it means. There are a couple of things you have to memorize, such as this is the natural number set. This is the whole number set. And this is, the, by definition, these are the integers. This is the definitions. Those things you need to memorize to understand. Um, and remember, integers don't include all the negative numbers or all the positive numbers. They only include the, the natural numbers, their opposites, and zero. Does not include decimals or fractions or irrational numbers like square roots. Okay, it's the counting numbers, their opposites with zero. That's it, and have fun. Thanks.